In this video, we're going to be going over my rig build and what I'd wish I'd done before buying some of these items. This video is not sponsored by anyone, nor was this gear sent to me by anyone. I've paid full price for the lot or have it on near permanent loan from friends. If you'd like to know the exact items used, I'll have a link for them down in the description below or feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot now. First of all the cage, this is pretty much a must have but it is worth putting a little bit of research into. You might find cage brand options very limited for your camera but if I could give one bit of advice it would be to make sure it has three points of connection so your camera isn't rotating around inside of your cage. When it comes to top handles my cage already has an RE connection but my taste in top handles required me to have a NATO rail so I'm attaching a quick release NATO rail. The quick release side of things refer to these little brass pins to help prevent any attachment from accidentally sliding off. To that I've attached the top handle with a NATO clamp. Next up is the base plate. This isn't actually too important unless you plan to start using V-mount batteries which as this video goes on you'll find out are very important to my rig. But the base plate will be your primary way of attaching 15mm rails to your rig. I started out with 6 inch rails but it didn't take too long for me to wish these were shorter. I'm now mostly using 4 inch rails but I'll cover off more about these later on as well. Now if you have an articulating screen it might be a good idea to open this up before attaching your V-mount battery plate. I ordered mine with dual 15mm rail clamps. But once again depending on your shooting style you may not need to have the screen locked open but it sure can help. To be real brief about V-mount batteries, there are three common sizes, 50 watt hours, 100 and 150 watt hours, and it's very important to consider everything you want to power before buying one. Each has a higher capacity and also gets physically bigger and heavier. With the 15mm rails, I like to extend these so they are the same length as where the V-mount battery comes to, just to protect the bottom of it a little bit in the case of an impact it is impacting on the rails and not on my battery. I then connected an HDMI adapter to the side of my cage just to save a bit of wear and tear on my camera's HDMI port and then onto the front of the top handle a swivel and tilt monitor mount. To be honest I think just a normal tilt mount would have been enough because I don't really use the, the swivel side of it. Which then allows me to connect my Atomos Ninja 5. And to link the monitor to everything I have a 35cm ultra slim HDMI cable and to connect the monitor to the battery I'm using a 2.1mm to DTAP power supply cable which I actually had left over from another monitor. Finally the showpiece to finish it all off is a mini matte box light. And that was my first build attempt done but very quickly there are a few things about this build that did not work for me. First of all, and I think it's a biggie, is the top handle. I found I was constantly shifting my grip to the other hand so I can hit record or reaching my hand over the camera to hit the start stop button. This also became a real pain when shooting a lot of 120 frames per second video as 3 seconds of adjusting my grip was causing me to have an extra 30 seconds of shaky footage at the start of every clip. So I ended up swapping out to a top handle with a record button which I very quickly fell in love with for documentary style shooting as it allowed me to instantly snap my camera around and start recording. But this still wasn't perfect. As soon as I started to tilt the camera I found I was giving it a bit of a death grip as neither of these two handles were particularly grippy. Especially the longer I used them as they are both metal on top I was getting quite sweaty hands and just not feeling secure with my grip of the handle. I ended up getting a leather sleeve made for mine which I attached with a spare screw to the top but something like hockey stick tape would work great as well if you don't mind your handle being left with a sticky residue if you ever decide to remove it. The extra grip on top here was a massive improvement for running gun style shooting and allowed me to spin my camera around quickly to capture moments that would just normally have been too slow with a tripod or gimbal or I would have potentially eventually lost my grip on the rig with the way the extra grip now allows me to react. Next up is cable management. This isn't necessarily an issue with anything but just something to avoid being lazy about. If you're moving your camera around the last thing you want is for your wide swinging loop of a cable to catch on something ripping the rig out of your hands. Tidy your cables up. This can be as simple as twisting them around other cables, squeezing them through gaps or just cramming everything into an empty space. This is also why I'm not a fan of coiled cables as yes they have a bit of safety given to them but they are impossible to hide away and I seem to catch them on objects so much more often. 
When it comes to the six inch rails underneath, I actually found these were a little bit too long as I'm not most of the time using a follow focus system. Reaching my hand round underneath to adjust aperture or the ND or zoom, the extra rails were digging into my hand a little bit so I ended up swapping out for shorter four inch rails. I also did try with a side handle for a while for extra stability but much like having too long of a rails underneath this only seemed to get in my way if I wanted to change my focal length or adjust settings. Though if you do decide to get a side handle I'd 100% recommend and spend that bit extra and getting one that you can rotate and change the angle with as the straight on handle does not feel that comfortable for me or that steady when held high or low for those high or low angle shots. Speaking of variable NDs and wishing I'd spent a bit more, I also wish I'd upgraded the matte box and instead got one that was compatible with the Small Rigs matte box variable ND system. The matte box light is not compatible with it. A lot of my work is filmed under very controlled lighting conditions and all I use the matte box for is that extra level of impressiveness. But when it comes to the run and gun B-roll style of shooting, the matte box is always left behind. So I can easily adjust my variable ND or zoom in and out depending on what lens I'm using. If you're wondering about my lenses, my holy trinity is the 18 to 120 f4 for everything and anything, the 10 to 24 for my Rocksteady on a gimbal motion shots, and the 33 f1.4 for my shallow depth of field B-roll. For video, these three lenses rock and I use each of them every single day. But when it comes to getting the real magic out of this rig, I end up going to the 50mm equivalent with a variable ND and without the matte box. Next thing to consider is your speed of assembly and disassembly. If you're not in the position to have multiple rigs, going for a quick release connection will be a blessing as your shooting requirements change throughout the day. I personally really should add a quick release option between my cage and my base plate to remove all that lower and back end quickly, but I haven't the need enough for one year as my second rig is normally a fully set up on a tripod shot or gimbal rig. But on the odd time I do need to disassemble things, the top handle easily comes off along with the monitor and all the cables attached to it. Make sure your attachments have the right connections for you and really consider if you want to be easy to remove or that little bit more locked in and solid. Then on to power and the V-mount battery. You can easily run a dummy battery to your camera, which I'd suggest if you're using an older camera with smaller battery. Or even if you're just like a little extra life, you might be able to charge your camera via USB-C, though do note this is normally done at a much lower charge rate. If you plan to attach a lens control system like a follow focus, these can quite often require power, which once again you could run from your V-mount battery. But all up, what you'd like to power will have a bit of a say of what capacity battery you'll need and what connections it has. I originally planned to run everything I could, but over time have slimmed things down to just the monitor. And from a 50 watt hour battery, I get about four to five hours of continuous runtime on my Atomos Ninja 5. But do note, I am not using the Atomos as an external recorder. Some cameras might not be able to output the frame rates externally that they can record at internally, or your monitor might not be able to record in formats that are beneficial to your editing workflow. But the reason I love using external monitor is for its size and video tools. I have all my camera's output display options turned on, plus I can view things like waveforms or focus peaking while still using autofocus, which is great by the way to tell if your camera has missed focus for a second and you should hold that shot for just a few moments longer. And jumping up to a larger screen than your camera makes things so much easier. Now I know what a lot of people will be thinking is yes I now have a very impressive looking rig but surely the weight and size of it all defeats the purpose. Firstly, the matte box light weighs next to nothing and I feel is visually the most impressive part of the rig. But when it comes to using my 33mm for run and gun B-roll, the extra weight of the rig removes all the little vibrations you would cause from hand holding a camera combined with a very reliable grip. So you're not struggling to hold it all. The extra weight and gravity keep things very still, so long as you're not trying to walk. This does not replace a gimbal, it just unlocks a different style of shooting. But finally, this brings me around to what I feel is the most important part of it all, which is balance. When holding your rig, you don't want to feel it is tipping forward or back out of your hand. For straight on shots, this will give the most steady of results as it'll require the least amount of effort to keep still. But when things finally require you to tilt your shot up or down, you don't want to be struggling to keep your camera under control and steady. Balance is key to this. 
With this particular setup, for low angles just require a bit of pressure from my palm, or high angles I lift the rig with my thumb. And I've quite often found if I'm happy with all my settings, I'll actually get a grip on the base plate and pull the rig down just a little to create even more force against the top handle to really lock things in nice and steady for those tilted shots. So don't be delusional, I'm not trying to imply that a rig is going to replace a tripod or gimbal. In fact, for most filming, I'd highly recommend you get both of those items first. But what this rig did for me was unlock another tool in the toolbox, a creative and faster style of shooting give me far more reliable shots for a videographer that really struggles with anything but perfection. My name's Thomas Busby, if you have any questions about this rig please leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you, but until next time, I'll catch you next time.